Kitty Cuzzle Switcheroo, Anyone But Me by Nancy Curley. Chapter 3 For the rest of that day, everywhere Katie looked, someone was laughing at her, mostly because George kept cranking jokes. Hey, Maud Monster, can you burp a song for us? He asked. I can. George began to belch out the ABC song. By the time he got to Z, the other kids were all giggling. Hey, you know something? George announced. Burping a song kind of sounds like a kazoo. That's what your name should be, Katie. Not Katie Kazoo. Katie Kazoo. Then he started chanting, Katie Kazoo, Katie Kazoo, over and over again. The other kids began to join in. Katie Kazoo, Katie Kazoo, Katie Kazoo, Katie Kazoo. Katie sank down in her chair. She tried hard not to cry. All right, that's enough, Mrs. Jerkman scolded the class. She turned to George. I'm sending a note home to your mother. I expect you to bring it back to me with her signature. George shrugged as if he didn't care. As the afternoon went on, Katie wished the other kids would stop laughing when George teased her. He really wasn't all that funny, but she did kind of understand why the kids kept laughing. If, she, if they didn't, George might make fun of them next. Before school ended, Katie walked over toward the window where the hamster cage was. It was her turn to feed Speedy this week. Hamsters are so lucky, Katie thought to herself as she watched Speedy running on his wheel. They never have bad days. Every day is just the same for them. Finally, the bell rang. The day was over. Katie grabbed her books and ran for the door. She had to make sure she was the first one out of the classroom. But it didn't matter. George caught up to Katie right away. He followed her halfway home. Katie Kazoo, I see you, he shouted. Hey, Katie, wait up. Katie could hear Jeremy calling after her as she ran towards her house. She knew he just wanted to make her feel better. But Katie didn't stop. She didn't want to hang out with Jeremy. She just wanted to get home, go upstairs to her room, and shut the door. Even that wasn't easy to do. When Katie got home, her mother was sitting on the front steps, waiting for her. Hi, Kat! Her mother greeted her with her special nickname. I made some yummy chocolate chip cookies. Want some? I, um, I'm not hungry right now, Katie mumbled. She raced past her and opened the screen door. I gotta get homework done. As Katie entered the room, she found her brown and white cocker spaniel, Pepper, lying on her bed. Pepper picked up his head and looked at Katie. He reached out his long pink tongue and gave her a big kiss. Katie hugged her dog tightly. Thanks, Pepper. She whispered quietly into his brown, floppy ear. At least someone isn't making fun of me today. Pepper looked up at her and smiled. Jeremy was always telling Katie that dogs couldn't really smile. But Katie was sure that Pepper could. Pepper's just a really special dog, she would tell Jeremy when he argued with her. He's even smarter than people. Now, as Pepper lay his head in her lap, Katie decided that even if her cocker spaniel wasn't smarter than people, he certainly was nicer. That night at dinner, Katie picked at her spaghetti. She rolled the long noodles around on her fork. Then she pushed the meatballs over to the side of her plate and scowled. Three weeks ago, Katie had told her mother that she was a vegetarian. Her mother kept giving her meat anyway. Well, Katie was just not going to eat the meatballs, that's all. You wouldn't believe the day I had at the office, Katie's father announced as he took a bite of his meatball. We have this new guy, and he was working on the computer when, usually, Katie hated it when her father took up the whole dinner talking about his accounting firm. But tonight, she was happy to sit quietly and let him talk. 
it was better than having to explain why she was so miserable. Unfortunately, her dad's story finally came to an end. Immediately, Katie's mother changed the subject. So, kid, what's new with you? She asked. Katie shrugged. Nothing. Really? Her mother asked. Well, you sure had a lot of homework. I haven't seen you since you got home. Katie nodded slowly. We had a ton of social studies questions. She muttered, "Um, I'm not so hungry. Can I be excused?" Katie watched as her parents gave each other their nervous looks. They knew something was wrong. They just weren't sure what to do about it. Finally, her mother said, "Sure, Kat, go ahead. I'll clear the table." Katie stood up and walked out of the room. She opened the front door, and sat on the stoop outside her house. She looked out into the darkness. Suddenly, the whole rotten day flashed in front of her eyes. She she thought about missing the football and losing the game for her team. She thought about her new jeans in the hamper, all caked with mud. She thought about the belt she let out during math. Worst of all. She thought about what George was going to do to her tomorrow. I wish I could be anyone but me, she shouted out loud. A shooting star shot across the dark night sky, but Katie was too upset to notice it. Okay, so that's the end of today's story. Did you like my story? Then push the thumbs up sign or the subscribe button, please. Bye.